Welcome to the Academic Woman Amplified Podcast. I'm your host, Kathy Mazak, tenured full professor, mom of three, and firm believer that the culture of academia needs to change radically. Women are revolutionizing academia within institutions that were not built for us. If you're ready to reject the culture of overwork, kick guilt and overwhelm to the curb, and amplify your voice to make a real impact on your field without breaking down or burning out, you're in the right place. And it all starts with writing. Let's go. The very nature of academic work means that we have to juggle. The three pillars of our work, research, teaching, and service, outline a daily working life where we are pulled in at least three directions, though in reality, it is many, many more. Academia is maybe the only career where you study for years and years, but your studies only partially prepare you for your actual job. Becoming an expert in your field does not necessarily mean that you're prepared to do the everyday, day-to-day tasks of academia. For that, we need to learn academic project management. And that's what today's podcast is all about. As we craft, execute, and write up our dissertation projects, we learn about research design, library research, data collection, and document crafting. Writing a dissertation takes project management skills. Depending on the amount and quality of mentoring we get during this process, it can be a struggle to figure out these skills as we go. But nevertheless, if you've done a dissertation, you've done project management. However, You've done project management on one academic project, and often while dissertating, this is the only major academic project you're working on. Fast forward to the tenure track, and you are expected to manage the following academic projects simultaneously. Teaching new course preps, often more than one at a time. Participating in service activities such as curriculum redesign, governing committees, and all of that. Mentoring students, running a lab or research center, writing and submitting grant proposals, writing and publishing articles and books, managing a publication pipeline. Do I need to keep going, (laughs) right? We're supposed to do all of these projects, major projects at the same time. Without a system for project management, you're going to feel overwhelmed and exhausted all the time, no matter how much progress you're actually making. And what's worse, you're not even really supposed to talk about this, since asking for help and admitting you don't know how to do something are big no-nos in the ridiculous culture of academia. So most of us just reinvent the wheel to varying degrees of success as we try to tackle multiple projects at a time. So much rigorous preparation and the fact remains that the day-to-day project management tasks of being an academic are not part of our training. In some cases, these tasks are modeled by excellent mentors, but in some cases not. Most of the time, we're making it up as we go along. If you've been following along with this podcast and with my work as an academic writing coach, you know that I'm on a one-woman mission to reveal all the quote-unquote secrets to how to do academia successfully so that we can all be happier, healthier, and more fulfilled in our careers. So the truth is professors need to be project managers, but we rarely think of writing an academic article or designing a new course as a project. It is, though, and because of that, we need to start approaching our writing and all of our academic work like project managers. All right, so first we need to develop some project management skills, and that's what this podcast is about today. So are you ready? We're going to talk about the basic skills of academic writing project management. Now, what we talk about here, once I go through some of the skills of writing project management you're going to see how these same project management skills can be used in other areas of your academic life. All right, so I have several things here to talk about. So first, not all writing tasks actually involve writing, all right? And so when I say writing, I don't only mean putting words on a page, and this is very basic to academic writing project management. If you only, quote unquote, count 
writing on a page, words on the page, you're missing a lot of the tasks that it takes to complete an academic project. And I mean, pre-sitting down to write tasks and post-sitting down to write tasks. So a writing project involves all of the things that you must do to complete it. So yes, when I say writing, I mean reading, collecting data, analyzing data, creating charts and graphs, proofreading, all of that stuff. By thinking about all of these things as writing, then you can feel happy that you're making progress towards your publication goals when you are. This is super important because a lot of us feel like we have to do what I call pen to paper or cursor to screen writing for it to count. And that is just not true. In fact, when we do take that kind of myopic view of writing, we are not looking at our writing like a project manager. A writing project is bigger than that. It has a lot of moving parts. And that brings me to the second project management basic for academic writing, which is the difference between a project and a task. Here's a common writing mistake that you should stop making right now. Putting projects on your to-do list instead of tasks. So raise your hand if you have been doing this, writing a project like finish article on your to-do list and then being so sad because it just keeps going to the next day's list and the next day's list for, I don't know, how long does it take to write an academic article in your field? Six months? A year? You're setting yourself up for failure if you are putting a project on your to-do list instead of a task. So we really need to master this project versus task distinction. That means that what you need to do is break your writing projects into tasks. Then your tasks go onto your to-do list. So this sounds simple, right? But almost everybody struggles with this. So that's what I'm gonna dig into right now. The first step to managing your academic writing projects is to know the difference between a project and a task. Okay, so here we go. Projects are big, like writing an article, doing a book proposal, writing a grant. Tasks are small, like write the introduction, investigate competing titles, create the grant budget. Tasks are what we put on our calendars or on our to-do lists projects are what we put on our publication pipelines. There are some project management skills we need to kind of hone here. First, you need to be able to break a project down into tasks. That's a project management skill that you need to work on, all right? When coaching academic women on their publication strategies, I've found that many don't take the time to break the project into tasks and or don't have a realistic picture of how long it will take them to complete each task. To solve the first problem, you need to actually dedicate time to project management. That is, you need to schedule time to break a project into tasks so that then you can schedule out those tasks. Obviously, I think (laughs) this gets easier with a system, it gets easier the more you practice it, and it definitely gets easier if breaking a project into tasks can be templated, okay? So if you can create a template of typical writing tasks or typical project tasks around writing an academic article, for example, that's gonna take this big step and all this time and all this thinking and energy out of your process and get you to words on the page faster. So to save time and energy, You want to create templates of the tasks necessary to complete common writing projects that you do. That way, you're not reinventing the wheel every time you start a new writing project. Okay, so I use Trello for this, but you could use whatever kind of project management software you want, or you could just use a piece of paper and a list or a Google Doc or something like that. I'll be telling you more a little bit later about how I manage projects with Trello. All right, so once you've gotten this concept of breaking projects into tasks, you need to start to hone your skills at estimating how long tasks will take. Okay, so you've got your task list. 
How long is it going to take you to complete each task? Well, no one can tell you how long it will take you to complete a task. Variables include how fast you write, time of day or energy level when you attempt to do the task, complexity of the task, ability to focus, momentum, among other things. So your ability to estimate how long it takes to complete a task will get better with time as you practice and put some energy and focus behind it. That said, most people underestimate how long it will take them to do something. No, I'm not talking about you. Don't take it personally. (laughs) The danger of this underestimation is that you start to feel bad about your writing and your process because you keep underestimating. And so that means you keep not checking tasks off your list or not reaching your goals. And this leads to guilt and overwhelm. And we know that guilt and overwhelm are writing's two biggest enemies. So what happens? You underestimate how long it's going to take you to do something. You start to feel bad because you feel like you never get anything done. You write less. You lose confidence. And yuck, it just feels awful. So we don't want to do that. Instead, I want you to actually overestimate the time it will take you to do tasks. You need to create a positive feedback loop between you and your writing. To maintain and perpetuate positive feelings about your writing tasks, you need to feel like you are winning, that you're checking things off the list, that you're moving projects forward, that you're creating momentum. But you need to proactively set yourself up to win at writing. If you overestimate the time it takes you to do a writing task, then you finished early and yay, that's what you want. All right, let's talk about task size. All right, so part of learning how to do this, learning how to break a project into task is figuring out at what level of granularity do we want to break down a project into tasks, right? Because if we get too granular, we might end up with a huge list of tasks that feels overwhelming in itself. So we don't want to do that either. So let's do an exercise, okay? Let's start here. Let's just create the rule that tasks should take less than an hour. All right, so you might be thinking, yikes, less than an hour. Yes, here's why. By putting an arbitrary time limit on tasks, an hour or less, I'm forcing you to start with a time limit and then fit the task into it instead of starting with the task and guessing the time it will take. Like all of my writing advice, I just want you to try it and see if it works. The purpose of this exercise is self-knowledge, okay? So it's playing with the size of tasks, how far you want to break something down in order to find out what works best for you, okay? So we're going to start out with this arbitrary limit of tasks should take less than an hour. So here's how this looks in practice. You identify a writing project. Let's say it's a revise and resubmit. Your first list that you make is going to be a rough list of tasks. So take about 30 minutes to really look at your article and the feedback that you got and create a list of tasks that you need to accomplish. Okay, now fold a piece of paper in half and then in thirds, making a paper with six squares on it. Each square represents one hour. You can use as many of these papers as you want, okay? Take your task list and map it into the one hour blocks. Some tasks will take less than an hour, and so you can fill in the box with a few tasks. You'll also notice that you wrote down tasks on your first list that will take more than an hour, so you'll want to break those up. You don't need to do the tasks in the order that you wrote them in the boxes, okay? This is just what we're trying to do is figure out the size of tasks that work for you. Now that you have your tasks mapped out in one-hour chunks, When you have an hour of writing time, you do one box and make a big X through it when it's done. As you do this exercise, you check off the tasks in the box and you note whether your time estimate was correct or not. You could do this by writing nailed it in all the boxes that you estimated your time correctly and try again in the ones where your estimate was off. Or you could even add a plus sign or a minus sign to the try again boxes to indicate whether you went over or under. Of course, 
You don't need to do this level of writing reflection every time you write something. Maybe do it once for each genre that you write this year. So by genre, I mean an article, a chapter, a grant proposal, conference paper. This exercise teaches you your personal time estimation tendencies and helps you self-correct them. All right, now that you've dug in a little bit about what is a task and how to estimate your time, now we need to talk about scheduling projects and tasks. All right, after you've broken down your writing project into tasks and you have some sense of how long each task will take, it's time to schedule tasks onto your calendar. So I recommend one of two methods to schedule tasks. Number one, actually give each task a due date. That's method one. Or method two is have a bank of tasks and then you have scheduled writing time or writing blocks on your calendar. And during the writing time, you pull from your bank of tasks. That's actually my preferred method. That's what I do. I have a bank of tasks, like a list of all the different tasks. And then in my calendar, I have my tiger time blocked off. And if you don't know about tiger time, you can go ahead and listen to episode two, which is all about that. So you've got your block of tiger time on your schedule. You go to your task list and it's like a bucket. You pick tasks from the bucket. So either way works, but be open to trying something new to find out what works for you. It's best to work one project at a time, but this is pretty much impossible in academia, right? We always have projects, multiple projects in various stages of being done, whether we're talking about writing projects or projects writ large. So what you wanna do is actually Work to create the illusion that you have one project at a time going on. So you want to strive to work on just one project and move it all the way to completion. But again, you know, one thing we can lose focus, right? Um, we have other projects that kind of jump up and then become seem to become more important. But what you can do there is you can schedule two-week sprints or two-week focus blocks where every two weeks you spend your writing block time, your tiger time, working on a different writing project and you can cycle through them. What you want to avoid is what I call the buffet method of writing, which is that let's say you have five different writing projects in various stages of completion. And each time you have a writing block, you sit down and you do a little over here, a little over there, a little over here, and you never actually move a project all the way out. If you spend about two weeks of your writing time on one project, you can like the point is to significantly move the needle on one project and see how that goes. All right, so let's take a step back and think about writing project management as a system. So we wanna systematize your writing project management and also your project management in general for all your academic projects. So here are some things that are gonna help you really create a system. One of them is to use templates to make common writing tasks repeatable. So much of our writing energy goes to figuring out what to do next, right? You sit down, you open the document, and you spend a lot of time figuring out what your next step is. A writing project management system eliminates this time spent thinking and planning at the beginning of every writing session. Every writing project we work on needs to be broken down into tasks that are doable in our blocks of scheduled writing time. If you have a pre-made list of tasks for, say, completing a revise and resubmit, then you don't have to spend time thinking about what you'll do first or how you'll break down that project into tasks. You just get out your revise and resubmit template and get to work. So let me be clear. What I mean by a template for academic writing projects is a generic task list and an outline for that type of projects. So for example... When you write a book chapter, there's certain tasks that go into writing a book chapter, right? An article, a conference paper, a grant. So what you want to do is as you do more and more academic writing, you want to 
build up kind of a library of templates where you've already done that work of breaking the project down into tasks. Okay, so the benefit of templates is that they stop you wheel spinning by making sure that you never start with a blank page. So you always have a place to start. Okay, so I'm going to tell you more at the end of this podcast about how I use Trello for that and what you can do if you would like to get a hold of some of my templates that I use. All right. The next thing that you need to do to really make your writing project management a system is to schedule in project management time. Now, I know you might be thinking, I'm short on time, right? Like, I don't have any time to do things. You're asking me to schedule more time. So what I want you to know is that even though it seems counterintuitive to schedule more time for project management, a short focus planning session will actually save you so much time and energy later. So for example, take about 15 minutes on a Sunday evening and then 10 minutes at the end of your day, right before you pick up your bag and leave your office. That's the amount of time I'm asking you to devote to writing project management. In the 15 minute Sunday night session, you can look at the big picture of the week, page through your paper calendar or flip through your electronic calendar. Make sure that you have a way to capture the to do's that float into your head as you think about your week. And again, you can use Trello for this. You could use sticky notes in a calendar or a bullet journal. The idea is to begin your week with the big picture of what needs to get done. After you've seen the big picture, Schedule into your calendar the first task that you will work on on Monday morning. That helps you not wheel spin and just get started. For example, I have a writing block scheduled on Monday mornings from 8.30 to 10 a.m. I don't wait until Monday at 8.30 to figure out what I'll be working on during that block. I figure that out in my Sunday project management time. So I go into Trello, I look at my writing projects, I figure out the task I'll work on during that block. Usually this involves reviewing my academic writing project management template and identifying the next step. In the 10 minute end of day session, you look at what you've completed, pat yourself on the back for everything you checked off your list, let go of the things that didn't get done with grace and self-forgiveness, and then choose the task that you will work on the next day. So this small investment of time is really going to help you get momentum with a system that's going to save you time and stress and wheel spinning. So the last thing that I want to tell you is to trust the system that you've created for yourself. Once you've set up templates for repeatable tasks and taken the time for project management, you need to trust the system and try it out for at least two weeks. So I confess that I love to make templates and I know that I need to plan project management time. But as soon as I get just a little bit stressed, I would push that all to the side. So to combat this, I've adopted the mantra, trust the system. When I want to ditch the plan I made the day before in response to something new that's come up, I just tell myself, trust the system. I work on the things I plan to work on and deal with fitting in the new task when I get to my project management planning time at the end of the day. So trust yourself, trust that you made good decisions about what you should do when you were doing your project planning and breaking projects into tasks and creation of templates. Trust all of that work. Don't undermine it by then not using it. All right. So throughout this podcast, I've been telling you about how I would let you know about the academic writing project management system that I use. Well, I use Trello and I've actually created a course about how to use Trello to manage not just your writing projects, but all of your academic projects. And this course is called Organize Your Academic Life. I only open it for enrollment in September and it is open now. So this week is enrollment week. And if you would like to enroll in this course, Organize Your Academic Life, you can go to kathymazak.com slash organize. 
in the course, I've made an off-the-shelf project management system for you using the very simple and free project management software tool called Trello. Inside the course, I walk you step-by-step through building the system with pre-made templates for every kind of writing project you can think of, pre-made templates and workflows for co-authoring, for working with students, for reducing your email, the back and forth emails that we create when we work with students and co-authors and committee members. So if you would like all of that done for you, a complete off-the-shelf done-for-you system that you can trust, <laughs> you can go to kathymazek.com slash organize and register today. Registration closes on Friday, September 20th. So if you want to get your hands on this course and start organizing your academic life, then go to kathymazek.com slash organize and enroll today. Whether you decide to take the course or not, I hope that you implement some of the project management gems from this podcast. If you do, let me know in the I Should Be Writing Facebook group. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time loving on yourself and your writing by listening to this episode. If you'd like to continue the conversation, join the over 7,000 academic women in the I Should Be Writing Facebook group. Just go to facebook.com slash groups slash I Should Be Writing or search for I Should Be Writing inside your Facebook app. See you inside.